So the Toronto Raptors play the Philadelphia 76ers in the first round of the 2022 NBA playoffs. And I'm going to get right into this video. There's not really much of an intro needed. In this video, I am going to talk about why I think the Toronto Raptors can and will defeat the 76ers in the first round of the NBA playoffs. I have a few reasons as to why I think the Raptors can pull off this quote unquote upset. So let's get right into the video. Also, before we get into this, please note that I am not being biased. Before you comment saying I'm biased, actually listen to the video first. I have some valid points. And also, this isn't a series preview. This isn't a side-by-side -side comparison of teams, a comparison of the players. I'm just talking about why I think the Raptors can and will beat the 76ers in the first round. So with that being said, let's get right into reason number one. <laughs> The 76ers obviously have their amazing top 10 duo in James Harden and Joel Embiid. So to counter that, the Toronto Raptors are going to need some star players of their own. Luckily, this season, they have two of them. Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet have really taken big leaps in statistics this year and have been overall just much better players, with Fred Van Vliet being an all-star and Pascal Siakam been amazing in his last 15 or so games. So come playoff time, Fred Van Vliet is going to really have to perform like he's been doing all season. He's been an amazing facilitator for the team. He's been able to score at will. He can guard positions one through three, despite being extremely undersized in NBA standards. And we can see him pop off on the offensive end any game of the series. Now, Fred Van Vliet is going to be a huge threat to the 76ers, but I think the bigger threat is going to be Pascal Siakam. It's been really debatable on who's had the better season and who's the best player on the Raptors because Pascal Siakam has been on another level in his last 15 or so games. And I think he's really going to be the one to kind of not carry the team, but he's going to be the number one option during the series. Looking at his stats in the last 20 games, he's averaging 27 points, almost nine rebounds and six assists per game. And the Raptors are 14 and six in the span of those 20 games. Those are, I'm gonna say it, those are MVP numbers. If someone put that up, they're definitely in the running for MVP. Those are absolutely amazing stats. And I'm expecting those to translate to the playoffs. I expect him to work down low a lot. I expect him to draw a lot of double teams where he can then dish it out to the open guy. And overall, he's going to be the best and most impactful player in the first round of this playoffs. Obviously, the Toronto Raptors' biggest threat this series is Joel Embiid. Embiid is, without a doubt, a top three player in the NBA, and I think it's really split between him, Jokic, and Giannis for who's the MVP. It's really going to be tough for the Raptors to stop him, but it's possible. To be fair, you can't completely stop Embiid. You can only slow him down, and I think the Raptors are going to be able to do that because even though the Raptors don't have that seven-foot guy that every other team does, essentially, they have so many guys that are just extremely tall with amazing wingspan and are just such good, versatile defenders. You got Scotty Barnes, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, Ken Birch, Precious Achua, Thaddeus Young, etc. All of these guys are going to take turns to try and guard Joel Embiid. There's going to be a lot of double teams and the Raptors have not really found a way to stop Embiid as he's averaging 29 points and 11 rebounds against the Raptors this season, shooting 47% from the field. But this playoffs, I think the Raptors defense is going to turn up even more and I expect us to at least hold back Embiid a little bit. I'm expecting a lot of tall ball lineups with Freddie playing at the one and the rest of the team all above six foot seven. So we can try our best to stop Embiid. When you look at the game of basketball as a whole, there's much more than the players that have to, you know, be performing well. Obviously, you need to have the front office to make the team good. You need to have maybe some fans so that they can root for you. And you also obviously need an amazing coach. And for the Raptors, they have a well-proven coach in Nick Nurse. He's proved that he is a top coach in the league. 
He's shown time and time again that he knows what plays to run. He always has a plan B. He always makes the right rotations. And he always has a game plan, even when some of the best players on this team are injured. So this reason kind of goes back to the Joel Embiid reason. I think if one thing isn't working when trying to guard Joel Embiid, then Nick Nurse will surely come up with something else to try to clamp up Joel Embiid. You will never stump the Raptors. You'll never leave the Raptors so they have no idea what they're doing. Nick Nurse will always find another way. If one way doesn't work, he'll find another way. And that's going to be extremely crucial in this series if they're trying so many things to stop Embiid, but they can't seem to stop him. Nick Nurse will find something eventually. Let's try to keep this reason short and sweet. Toronto is the only team in the NBA that doesn't allow non-vaccinated players to play in their arena. So normally this wouldn't be a problem, except Matisse Thybul of the 76ers is unvaccinated. Therefore, he will not be allowed to play in Toronto's home games. So games three, four, six. And this is going to be really big for the Raptors because their bench has not been the best this year. But with Matisse Steibel not coming off the bench anymore, this is going to leave some holes in the Sixers defense, meaning the bench can potentially step up. At the end of the day, no one wants to lose a rotational piece at all, especially during the playoffs. And especially Matisse Steibel, who's such an amazing 3 and D wing, it's definitely going to hurt the 76ers. We all know James Harden is not the best player when it comes to playoffs, and he has a history of choking in the playoffs, which is why he doesn't have a ring yet. And this was a huge what if for the 76ers. Lots of people were talking about what are the Sixers gonna do? Is James Harden gonna perform in the playoffs, or is he gonna play extremely terrible and extremely inefficient? Normally this wouldn't be a reason, but looking at James Harden's last few games, he's been playing extremely poor. The last time James Harden shot over 50% from the field was March 29th against the Milwaukee Bucks. Since then, he's been very inefficient, and in his last game against the Toronto Raptors on April 7th, he shot 3 for 12. The Raptors did a really good job of holding James Harden, and if James Harden does this in the playoffs where he shoots really inefficient and the Raptors clamp him up, then it's going to be really hard for the 76ers to generate offense. You still got Tyrese Maxey, who can run the offense as a guard, and Joel Embiid, who can do a lot on offense, but still, who wouldn't like James Harden on their team? Not really much to say here. The Toronto Raptors are going to be healthy in the playoffs. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say. No, all kidding aside, all the Raptors have to do is stay healthy. And they've shown that they're an amazing team when healthy. They've been on so many five plus game win streaks because the team was healthy. And I'm really excited what a healthy Raptors team can do in a seven game series. And the final reason is never count the Raptors out. The Raptors are always underdogs. It seems like everything they do, they're always every single time underdogs whether it's a game a series or a whole entire playoff run the raptors are never expected to do anything good and yet they keep proving everyone wrong take a look at this game i'm showing on the highlights for example aside from the fact that it's against the sixers that's not the only reason why i chose this let's rewind back to the start of the game yeah stop right there 17 to 2, which is absolutely crazy to think that they won that game by 5. Granted, 15 points is really nothing, especially that early into the game, but it shows what the team can do. They held back the scoring champion and went on a huge run to take this game. It's just the most recent thing they've done. I think the very next game, they came back 24 points against Houston. And a couple years back, they came back 30 points against Dallas. So yes, coming back from 15 points, especially with 
three and a half quarters left to go isn't really saying much, but it shows what the team is capable of. The Sixers are definitely a top offensive team in the league, and Joel Embiid is the scoring champion. So the fact that they went on this run while still holding Joel Embiid and James Harden to not scoring much to win the game is absolutely crazy. And I'm expecting much more from this team. I can guarantee the Raptors are going to overcome a 15 plus point deficit at least one time in this series. Whether it's in the game or in the series or just in the playoffs, never count the Toronto Raptors out. This team has heart and they've shown that they can beat some of the best teams in the entire NBA. So if I'm Philly, I'm pretty upset that I have to play the Toronto Raptors in the first round because I think the Toronto Raptors can and will beat the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm not going to say in how many games just yet because I'm going to come up with the playoff predictions probably tomorrow, so you'll see then. That's going to wrap up this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe and comment down below who you think is going to win this series, and I'll see you in the next one.